Mmm. Well, just as we predicted, after the uh, after the uh, Neil, Asana, and Kakuto have res have uh, got their memories back, it's now time for the cousins. Pero ang inunan nila rito si Roa. Nalaman ni nalaman nila yu nila nila Odo Yuga kay kay Ushiro, the 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 Roa Roman bassist na there's something wrong daw with Roa. Concert time na. So it's the line of the concert. So nagka nag well uh nagpakilala ang ang Team 7s ngayon. You still remember us Roa? And well Roa emphatically said no. Are you fans of mine? Naisip na tuloy ni Yuga na hamunin na sa duelo si Roa. Yo, eventually, they did duel. Pero, uh, while they were dueling, may napansin dito si si Yuga. Narecall lang niya kasi yung uh, yung time na na tinalo ni tinalo ni Luke si, ano, si, si Goha Yuga. Hindi na erase yung, di ba? Hindi hindi na erase yung memories ni ni Luke dito. When uh when Monster Born Monster Born was used on him. Nope. Hindi na nawala yung memories niya. So, he went back. You go you go recall as far back as the time when Otis uh, Otis made his very first appearance. No mga bata pa sila ni Roa. It dawned on him. During the final scene that Well, dinirecha na lang, dinirecha na lang si Roa. Roa, I know you still haven't lost your memories at all. Tama ba ako? Wow. Alright. So, kumaka! Ano eh? Usapan ng magkaibigan. Alright? Usapan ng magkaibigan. Let's just shed light on this episode. Critics of Star, shall we? Pace, excuse me. So the pacing was um was rather slow. Pero of course, nung pag pagkasimula pag pagkasimula ng ng duel, right? The pacing picked up just a little bit. Um, do I have complaints when it came to the pacing? Medyo. Kasi. Um, it didn't totally capture the sense of urgency that um, Team Sevens and their allies are now feeling. Because well, they just gotta find a way on how to um, on how to well, on how to neutralize Goha Yuga. Now that well, siya mismo ang sumira sa Monster Reborn. Uh, if you if you still remember, guys, siya mismo ang sumira sa isang set ng Monster Reborn niya. Parang naman hindi magamit. Eh, tarantado talaga eh. Tarantado ang kalaban eh. I was a bit satisfied when Go Yuga suddenly remembered na O nga no? Okay. So there's so there's chaos right now sa dam because of the because of the sudden influx of new Rush Duel formats. Okay, so na overload ang system. Hindi na biglang gumawa na hindi na pa magyari ito. Then, ayun, all of a sudden, he suddenly recalled uh, his memories as swirly. Yung times na magkakasama sila nila, Yuga, Luke, uh, of course, the, the, whole, the whole Team 7. He, no, if you still remember, guys, at the start of Season 2, he was the mascot of Team 7s. Eh, so to speak. Bigla na lang naalala. So, sabi nung taka siya, what the hell was that? So, sabi nung gano'n. Then, um, that, that was the only time the pacing was rather satisfying. But the rest, parang, hindi eh. Hindi ko naramdaman yung sense of urgency kila sa Team 7s ngayon eh. Na, as soon as possible, dapat ibalik na ang memories ng magpinsan kasi silang dalawa na lang eh. And now, they, um, inuna, na, inuna na muna nila si, Ro, si Roa. Kasi si Romin hindi mahanap. Hindi makagilap. Yeah. That's the, 
majority of the majority of the pacing talagang hindi ko na naman yung, certain, yung sense of urgency naramdaman ko na mayroong sense of urgency yun kay Goha Yuga that sabi niya uy proverbially sabi niya this is getting out of hand okay pag nagkataon ma-overload ang system ng Goha and it will shut down dueling altogether but it's not gonna work in his favor kasi he, he needs to duel to um to impose his will. E paano ako mag-shut down altogether on dueling? Wala. Tae siya. Flow naman. First gear shift here I can consider is the um, is the brief moment that you will um may have a um, partial recall of how uh, of how great the situation is now yung uh, kung nga rin na-overload na yung system ng Goha because of because of this um, because of the uh, the infestation of of new rush dual formats why did they call us a gear shift? wow tandaan nyo Yuo was the very first victim was Goha Yuga's very first victim uh, when, he, when he came back kasi siya ang kalaban nun eh Siya ang kalaban ni Goha Yuga nun, si Yuho. So, he took the full brunt of his older brother's dueling style and lalong-lalo na ang Monster Reborn. Kaya nga nagkagano'n yung memories niya. Pero, this gear shift can also, well, will also tell you that Yuho's memories are coming back slowly kasi naramdami eh. Rush dual program. Overload of that. Uh, you can tell by his voice that there's a, there's a bit of concern coming from him. So it can be a sign that Yuo's memories are slowly get are slowly coming back. Kaya gear shift ito. Final gear shift. Yup. Dalawa lang yun. Was during the final scene. Ayun nga. Uh, Yuga finally concluded that Roa hasn't lost his memories at all. He's just playing possum. Mga kamag-anag. Um, feeling, feeling may amnesia. Parang ganon. Feeling may amnesia. Uh, it's play acting. Why do they call us a gear shift? It'll make you think. Wag kung tama ang tama ang curia ni Yuga that the prior connections he's had with Luke and Roa was the reason why Luke was uh, had this immunity to Monster Reborn spell. Yung to Monster Reborn's mysticism. Kaya hindi na erase ang memories niya. So, well, agree si Luke. It, yeah, it, it's the gear shift that will make you think that that um, through pretending to have lost your memories, yeah, Roa is Roa is scared of Goha Yuga. He, he's probably doing this out of fear. Okay, so we got a deep dive there at least. So these two gear shifts that I saw, mm, both of them may play a role down the line of well as we approach as we approach the end of the uh, the end of sevens plot wise hmm malinis despite the flashback sequences by uh, by Goha Yuga or the Yuga and Luke. Bakit? Tahapyo lang na pinakita eh. Kasi if, if it's just if it's just uh, one or two seconds it usually doesn't have a um, uh, an impact to the main continuity of the episode. Well, thankfully it was a clean plot. Despite having um, despite having a dual scene, 
it still had a clean plot. Kasi, yun nga eh, pahapyaw lang na, na, na flashback sequences lahat ito eh. You can easily discount them or you can, yeah, you can easily ignore them. Because, wala silang ano eh, wala silang bearing sa, sa main continuity ng episode na to. So you can still, uh, you can still focus on the main story. You can still focus on the episode storyline. Kaya malinis ang plot. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. The flow and the plot compensated for uh, the shortcomings of the pacing. So, UBO 7's episode 84. What the hell? Two thumbs up. Bakit? Well, like I said, just a while ago, mga lifestyle. The plot and the and the flow totally made up for um for um for for the pacing's under delivery. Kung hindi maganda yung kung hindi maganda yung mga gear shifts na nakita ko, and um if it weren't for the uh, for the uh, for the episodes overall really clean plot. I might have given it the one thumb up. In the two thumbs up. Kasi, talagang, ano eh, if you're new to anime, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see that the pacing is, no, you, you would see that the pacing is dragging, pero, you would also see another thing from the pacing, which was what we discussed uh, earlier. So, yun nga eh. Kailangan, the pacing should elicit emotions from the audience. This, ito ang pinaka-job ng pacing ng, ep- ng, ng isang anime episode. Or, or in any, um, or in any, whether it be anime or live action. Kung hindi maganda ang pacing, it would elicit the wrong emotions. Or, the audience would be left emotionless for the episode. Kaya, um, basta, I wasn't able to uh, feel that sense of urgency coming from Team Sevens to um to restore the cousin the cousin's memories back. Although, dun sa sa episode pin, pinahanap na ni ni Gako to sa kanyang kamba na Alipores si Romin, and all they all they came back with was just a cardboard standee of her, announcing that she slept raw Romin in going solo. <laughs> Here's one thing about the about our about the main protag of sevens. Para tayong nag-iisip ito, right? It's a thinking. Uh, this character thinks. That's why he's the main protag. Uh, a smart kid, and wow, um, he's a good combination of academic and street smarts. Eh, si Yuga, and he proved that right here in this episode. Uh, pwede nga rin siya mag-detective eh. <laughs> okay? Nag-deduce siya agad na Teka Mukhang Mukhang ginugoyo lang tayo ni Rowan ngayon eh. Looks like There's nothing wrong with his memories So eh, Ma um, Based on um, Yuga's deductions ma, Makikita mo rin eh Parang nga wala eh Parang hindi siya, parang walang amnesia itong si, ano eh, si Roa. So, basta, the plot and the flow totally made up for the pacing. Kaya, sana, um, Bridge, uh, what you call this? Bridge did a better job when it came to the pacing of this episode. Kailangan kasi, ma-feel, okay? Kailangan ma-feel ng audience yung yung sense of urgency na yon coming from coming from Team Sevens man lang. Because, well, they're still down one man. Okay? The core of Team Sevens is four. Si Romin lang, si Romin na lang awala. Inuna lang nila si Roa kasi nandun eh. Kaya, pero, it still got the highest rating from me. Because, Wow, these are the gear shifts and the clean plot will really make you think. 
So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 84. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this vlog, this Yu-Gi-Oh! series, mga kalahis tayo. Mooncake na. Mooncake na mag... Mooncake na makatanggap ng, ng mababang rating. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still... Uh, who are still... Uh, depending on the... On the, on the CHD for... Well, for the latest of my anime reviews. Oks lang. Relax. Relax. Relax, relax. But I'll still recommend that you... You either join my fan group on Beagle or... For best results, subscribe to my Patreon. Alright? Until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Okay. Unang story. Well, ano eh. Puyat na sa trabaho si Kawai because I think for three or four successive nights uh, ano na sila, night shift. Kumbaga, uh, they're on night patrol duty. So, well, sa sobrang puyat niya na gumagar Ano na siya eh? Gumagano na siya sa, ano, sa loob ng patrol car. So, napansin ni Fuji. Ang ginawa ni Fuji, sinabihan si Kawai na, o oh, ikaw na mga patrolya dyan. Ako na rito. Basta, doon tayo, doon tayo magkita sa dulo. Alright. So, nilagay ito rin sa alangan ni si Kawai. So, she's now left to patrol the school in question kasi there have been a series of burglaries happening around around schools in the district. So, in a sign ang ang uh, ang precinct nila na mag, na mag night patrol dito sa mga eskwelahan ito. So, for this particular school, si Kawai lang mag isa ang magpapatrol niya. As a uh, sort of punishment from her um, from her from her from her immediate superior, si Sergeant Fuji nga. So, Habang pinapatrol ito, habang, dito, dito nakita yung kanyang, uh, dito lumos yung kanyang uh, takot for ghosts. Yeah, she's scared of ghosts. Talagang gumagano na siya kung magpatrol niya. No, at the same time pala, si, uh, si, ito nito? Hindi, hindi pala, hindi pala kawada ninyo eh. Si uh, Yamada. Si Yamada at si Minamoto, of course, the, the criminal affairs guys, they're staking out this same school for, for, the, for the burglar. Yung, ano, eh, yun nga, nakakita nga nila, uy, gumalaw na, ang gumalaw na suspect natin. And nakita rin nila si Kawai na nagpapatrol rin. Mabubuli niya, sublang, mabubuli niya, so stake out natin, gawin mo na para niyan, sabi ni, sabi ni Minamoto kay Yamada. Uh, nagpakita na si Yamada kay Kawai, akala ni Kawai multo. So, biglang kumaribas ang takbo. O di, sunod din si Yamada para pigilan siya. Then, well, he was, even, he was successful in in stopping Kawai, pero sabi ni Kawai, <laughs> talagang, talagang, talagang panic mode na si Kawai. This gave the burglar a chance to escape, unfortunately. So nakita niya. So nakita ng ng burglar. Uy, bike. Teka. Pwede na akong istokwa. Bigla may boom flashlight sa kanyang ganon. Si Fuji pala. So si Fuji na nakahuli. Eh, what? Well, explain later on ni Fuji na kung bakit niya iniwan si Kawai doon. Second story. Medyo. Um, ay, ganito yung nangyari. There was a grouping case na inahandle nila Yamada at Minamoto. Pero, ang umaresto, sila Kawai at Fuji. Sa train station mismo, um, tawag dito, uh, hinuli sa akto. Halo sa akto kasi, um, yung babaeng hinipuan ng, ng mokong na to, ayun, umiiyak, humakagulgul sa iyak, nakaganon sa, sa platform. Siyempre, traumatized. E, teenager eh. So, eh, 
Hindi imposibleng hindi imposibleng magsinungaling ito. She just got growth, okay? Hinipuan. Ito nung Ito namang suspect todo yabang. I want my sa interrogation nung kasi ang umiimbestiga mismo si si Yamada. Porma niya ng yabang eh. Ang angas. Pulis na ang kaharap. Maangas pa rin. Sabi niya, ah, I want my lawyer. Ah, wala, wala. Wala kayo papatbad sa akin. Basta tatawa. Basta abangan mo na ng abogado rito. Ganun ang aste. So, well, eventually, <laughs> humingi ng tulong si Yamada kila Fuji at Minamoto. Ito kasi mga seniors niya sa, sa police sa anime noon. Okay? Okay. So, the plan was hatched to um, to make this to make this asshole of a suspect talk. So so sinabi nila, "Well, we're going to do a reenactment of the crime." So nagtaka yung suspect, ha? Huh? So he was led to this room we're in. Si Kawai, Fuji, Minamoto and their um and their other friend na yung nagre-record nandoon. O sige, irereenact natin. Ang tumayo pang victim si Minamoto. So nakagano na siya. Tapos ginagano pa yung point niya ganun. Okay, sabi ni Yamada. Could you show us how you um how you touch that uh, how you touch the girls behind? May nakita talaga pili si yung point ni Minamoto rito. Okay, todo picture si Fuji. Si he's in, she's in charge of photography. Tapos nagpanggap na trainee si <laughs> Si Kawai so nanonood na na ganun. At yung nagdo-document si Ama Pangalan no, I, for, I already forgot her name. Yung naka nakaganoon pa siya ganun eh. Nakataas yung turtleneck. Okay, todo record. So, oi. So, could you now show us sa sa ni Tanong ni Yamada, could you now show us how you um how you approached her from behind with your private part so totong inig na yung suspect until he actually broke down ito namang si Fuji she was merciless talagang todo todo picture siyang ganun then bigla niya sinabi ay nakalimuto ko maglagyan ng film ito <laughs> so eventually um, the suspect lightened up. Okay, sige. Okay, sige. Okay, sige. Wag, wag yun akong ganit. Wag yun po akong ganit. Okay, okay. I will tell all. Aamin na ako sa krimen ko. Yun. Tuloy ang umamin sa kasalanan niya. And, todo ngayon pasasalamat si Yamada kila, kila, kila Fuji at Minamoto for, for pulling up this act. <laughs> Eh, sabi na lang ni Fuji, hinawakan siyang gano'n habang nakabaw siya. You gotta know your place, Yamada. This means, this means, ititreat mo, ititreat mo dapat kami. Eh, sinigunda naman siya ni Minamoto. Sorry, Yamada. Uh, I'm broke right now. So, yeah. You, you'll have to treat us. Sinabi niya, Miss, at sinabi pa ni Fuji kung saan restaurant dapat. <laughs> eh, so, Sabi ni Yamada, okay, sige. Yeah, I really want to thank you guys. Pero, um, in, his, in his brain, he is saying na, now I hate you even more. <laughs> Excuse me. So let's break this episode down now. <clears throat> Critic sub style. Pace. Yung pace in the first story, medyo <clears throat> slow and excruciating. Kasi, <laughs> ramdam na ramdam ko ang phobia ni <laughs> ni Kawai dito kung gano siya katakot sa multo right it had the pace was slow and excruciating enough for me to relate to Kawai's flight which 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 is the actual job of an, of an episode spacing right talagang swap sa second story naman um, it had a slow but funny pacing. Although, go, teka, medyo seryoso kaso. Alright? 
a woman's rights was violated here. At yung at yung suspect, aba, may may angas pang nalalaman na talagang uh, talagang ipinipin niya yung kasalanan dun sa babae. The pacing will make you uh, will make you hate this suspect even more. Uh, lalo na kung lalo kung matinong lalaki ka, tulad ko. Ayan. Parang parang sarap sa pakin eh. Talaga ang sarap sa pakin ng mukha na to eh. On what his uh, what his mindset was. Talagang kung matinong ka lalaki, talagang gusto mong gusto mong gusto mong taggan na ng mukha nito eh. <laughs> you would you would really want to to punch this guy's lights out. Dahil ikaw na nga itong nanghibo, ikaw pa ang mayabang. Ganun eh. And you would absolutely feel for the victim kasi teenager lang eh. So what kung naka-score? Eh, yun, yun, yun nga school uniform nila. So, wow. Right? Then, the hilarious ending talagang talagang masasabi, talagang uh, the pace will make you will make you say this. Oh, tangin na mo, buti nga sa'yo. <laughs> May kinalagyan ka tuloy sa mga pulis na yan. Through the, um, the screw job, <laughs> um, kawaii, and then, the, all the lead characters did against this guy, talagang, hindi ka makakaway. <laughs> Do I have complaints when it comes to the pacing of the, of the episode overall? Hell no! <laughs> Hell no! I'm totally satisfied with the pacing, of, with the overall pacing of this episode. Flow naman. Well, biggest gear shift here was um, was when um, Fuji actually caught the burglar. Ang bago tinan ko na gear shift. Well, just goes to show you how smart Fuji is. Okay? Just goes to show you. He, she even had to um, put her partner up to something I don't know, kasi pinalabas lang niya as punishment eh, pero sinabi lang niya na oh, makita na tayo sa ano, y- yung pala natuntun, natuntunan na pala niya suspect kung, kung, saan lala, kung saan lalabas to so yeah, it just goes to show you how uh, uh, how smart uh, how smart a cop Fuji is, kaya nga siya sergeant eh biggest gear shift of the second story was when ayun nga the um the reenactment screw job they did <laughs> I would be an idiot if I do not call this a gear shift bakit it's probably it's the most satisfying scene of the episode we're in all four characters plus all four lead characters plus one uh ay yung kanilang kumaga supporting character um, put together this screw job just uh, simply just to teach this uh, this arrogant son of a bitch a lesson. Hindi siya dapat mag-asta ng ganon. He's the suspect here. Aba, kailangan. Well, it's their way of saying to this suspect that well, know your place, dude. You're in no position to um to um to to put the blame on on the victim here. You are you have no right to play the victim here. Yeah. It's a, it was a really satisfying gear shift. Talagang mararamdaman mo 'yun eh. Mararamdaman mo 'yun. So these two gear shifts that I saw um the first one may play a role down the line in this anime kasi you can also view this as a character development gear shift for Kawaii. Ngayon, alam na niya yung value ng kanilang patrol car. At medyo, yeah. And she proverbially vowed to herself that she's gonna put in more work when it comes to cleaning this car. So, character development na rin yun. <laughs> Plot wise. Need I say more? Planchado ang plot, mga ka-lifestyle. Maganda, maganda na naman yung transitioning from the first to the second story. So, you, you gotta hand it to Madhouse. They know how to, um, 
they know how to uh, to dish out the to dish out the um, the iron the iron out lots. It's madhouse. <laughs> so pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, folks. So, Police in a Pod, episode 5. Isipa. Oh. <laughs> Two thumbs up. It just goes to show you through this episode that um, the daily life of a cop is never easy. Whether it be um, to call this uniformed or plain clothes. Hindi madali ang mga trabaho. Hindi madali ang trabaho ng mga polis. That's why they're technically they are frontliners in uh, in any crisis. Actually, hindi lang uh, hindi lang robbery, hindi lang acts of lasciviousness. Acts of lasciviousness yon yung yung ang tinakaw na second story uh, in in a Philippine setting, of course. And of course, the COVID pandemic. Kaya, this anime is a constant reminder to all of us anime fans that we should respect policemen even more. Kasi, sila talaga unang humaharap sa, sa trouble eh. Right? At sila pa ang unang, sila pa ang unang inaangasan ng mga suspect. Lalo kung ikaw ang victim. Hindi mo, suspects, actually love to play the victim. Para nga namang hindi sila ma... ma... makalata agad ng mga polis or ng even mga... Uh, they, they would also like to get sympathy from the public. Nope. For me, <laughs> nang, hibo ng, nang hibo ka ng teenager, tarantado ka. <laughs> Kung... Well, if, if I were the cop, I probably might have smashed his face in. <laughs> so, thank God for cops. So again, Police in a Pod, Episode 5. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Mama Lifestyle. Madhouse has delivered once again. Galing, galing ng mga story. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And if you're still, uh, well, and for the rest of you who are still stuck with the CHD, chill chill lang muna. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Um, we saw in this episode na dinalo ni Shato yung puntod ng tatay niya. Of course, that anniversary daw eh. Niremind kasi ng ermat niya. Then, <laughs> Rianga is there in the uh, in in that same old place. Well, of course, stalker mode na naman. <laughs> um, something more disturbing came along. There were three uh, armed men with hoods. Uh, nasa dun nila yung madre na na tumitendo sa simbahan at sa libingan. Then, well. Nakalata na kagad ni Riyang eh. Uy, something's about. Ayun. Tinumba nila yung ano. Tinumba niya yung tatlo. Then he found out that, uh, well, how is behind it. And pag, paglingat niyang ganun, wala na si Shato. And we figured that Shato went, went for, went for how. Yun nga. Yun nga ang pinakita later. Habang hostage pa ni How yung madre. So, well, his true objective was Shato. In order to draw out Riyangha. Obvious. Well, this was going on. Dumana pala yung, uh, yung head ng agency niya, si Brian. Sa nanay niya. Uh, yeah, the, the, Dunkworth, the Dunkworth household. At doon, nagsimula yung kanyang... Well, basically her origin story. Ano pala? Uh, yeah, she, she figured in a car accident pero hindi yun ang nakikita ng mga polis nun. It was a kidnapping. Pero yung yung nagmanehong uh, yung nagmanehong binatilyo patay na rin. So they were so now the angle is organized crime. 
at nang naghahandle pa na ng kasong ito ay ang kanyang mismong ama. Well, uh, si uh, Agent Abel Dunkworth. We soon found out that um, uh, Chateau is, uh, is the female victim here. Nung pinakita sa... Well, kumaga, kinuntinyo na yung story, yung final seed ng pilot. Agent Dunkworth took her, took her in muna sa kanilang household. E yun pala, hindi pala sila magkaanak ng, ng asawa niya. So, they're, they're a childless couple. And he, he's, a, he's about to retire from law enforcement. So, eventually, um, the case went cold. At ngayon, hinahanap, hinahanap niya nung si Shato. Nadatna niya sa isang boarding school. Doon kasi iniwan ng ng uh, ng government siya. Eh, eh nagliriklamo kasi yung headmaster, yung pinaka-headmaster ng school that Shato is uh, aloof. She stays away from the other kids. Eh, well, right there and then, Agent Dunkworth took it upon himself to adopt to uh, to adopt Shato. And now her name is Shato Dunkworth. Pero um something came up. Something weird came up eh. The name Shato bata kasi ang pagka-introduce ni Shato dito, Shato Noble. So chinek din noon ni Agent Dunkworth yung kanyang pangalan. It doesn't exist. Then Chinig din yung records, yung passport ng, na, naku, na nakuha dun sa medyo sa binatid yung kasama niya na patay na. His name is Riang Ha Song. Going back to the current timeline, well, nadada na ni Riang Ha kung, nasa, kung saan tinatago ni Hao si Shato. Well, basically, uh, dinirecha na niya si Hao by, well, by shooting him repeatedly. Where is she? Then, final scene, boom! A car blows up na kung saan nandun si Shato. Eh, yun pala, pinakita, may, may, may bomba palang kasama eh. Laking bomba. Let's break this episode down now. CHD, uh, CHD. Critic sub style. But first, pace. The first, third, and the latter third of the episode tense ang pacing dahil eh, sinugod sila ng mga ng mga mga high risk ni Howe eh, para duutin basically si well una yung madre then si Shato na tapos of course the, uh, the latter third of the episode nag uh, nagkita na yung mortal na magkaaway si Rianga tsaka si Howe and well looks like and looks like Rianha is winning. <laughs> Rianha is winning. But the middle third, well, basically it's just right. Because um, it's it's almost one big backstory sequence. Because, siguro, uh, Platinum Vision, yes, Platinum Vision. Okay, here is the studio behind this anime. Figured that well, because na hindi natin tinuloy yung final scene dun sa pilot, dito natin itutuloy. So, now we know uh, Shato's origins. Mukhang there were more uh, there were more questions than answers. But do I have complaints? Nope. Swak lang ang pacing. Inakma dun sa parte ng kwentong yon inakma naman dun sa isang parte ng kwento. That backstory sequence let me confused. And the pacing made me do that. Kaya, no complaints. Flow naman. First gearship was in the first third of the episode. When, well, successful si Hao sa pagdukot kay Shato. Ano nag-call sa gearship? Ain't it obvious mga ka-lifestyle? It triggered the episode. Final gearship was... Well, ayun na. Uh, the gearship we're in, chinek din yung records ng bangkay 
ng bangkay ng kasama ni kasama ng batang shadow noon sa Oche na uh, syempre patay na I gotta call that a gear shift kasi bangkay na riang hasong ang pangalan ito riang hasong na to ay buhay na buhay pa so siguro that's just his alias or um yeah probably alias lang niya yun it will make you think kaya nga gear shift eh so these two gear shifts that I saw well I truly believe it in my heart that both of them will have implications down the line in this anime because again it left more questions than answers all the while you should uh, you should wait for the next episode plot lies Habang yung backstory sequence eh, kaya planchado ang plot. Well, simple-simple lang yung layout ng plot eh. First third, main continuity. Middle third, backstory ni Shato. Final third, hmm, main continuity uli. And ayun, <laughs> hostage ng bongga-bongga si, si, si Shato. So, as the viewer, you won't get lost in, in the overall plot of the episode. Kasi, definite yung, uh, what you call this? Kumbaga, yeah, definite kung alin dito ang main continuity, alin dito ang backstory. So, it's a well-ironed out plot, folks. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Love of Kill, episode 4. Deserve two thumbs up. If there's anything that this anime will tell you, it's this. Magulo ang buhay kapag assassin ka o bounty hunter ka. Hindi lang, hindi lang, well, you're not, uh, you won't just invest in in gear and, and they say the pay is good pero you know you'll also invest in enemies whether you like it or not okay so nakita natin dito Riyama's past has finally caught up with him ayun nga nadamay nga lang yung yung babaeng nililigawan niya pero tanong is this the real Ryang Hasong? Kasi nakita natin dun eh. Bangkay na yung totoong Ryang Hasong eh. At pinakita yung passport talaga, yun ang pangalan niya. Who is this Ryang Hasong that's uh, that's always uh, that's always hitting on Shato? Um flirting with her at every um at, uh, at almost every turn. <laughs> Sino ito? So now, the um, to call this, the enigma factor is now with Ryang ha. Kasi si Shato, well, um, kung pupunta niyo yung isang conversation scene ni Mrs. Da- ni Mrs. Duckworth at ni Brian, may sinabi si Mrs. Duckworth don that uh, I think she's looking for something. She's probably referring to Shato's actual past. Kaya siya nag bounty hunter. Maybe that's the reason why she uh, she decided to become a bounty hunter. Madren. Sa mga connection at siyempre sa mga makakalaban niya. Wow. Pero the the ball of enigma is now in Ryangha's court. He's got a lot of explaining to do with um, uh, regarding his true identity. Kasi nalaman nga natin dito na yung totoong Riyang Hasong is now dead. Kasama ni Shato nung doon sa accident yun. So, I'm going to repeat. This episode raised more que- uh, na, uh, raised more questions than answers. Kaya, 
Should you watch the next episode? Oh, hell yeah, folks. So again, Love of Kill, episode 4. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga lifestyle. Sino ka ba talaga, Riyang, ha? And Shadow, come on. Look at your past. Look at your real past. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still um, stuck with the CHD, chill lang. Take your time to either subscribe to Patreon or join my fan group on Beagle. But until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Tuloy pa rin. Well, Yo was able to convince his ancestor to just sit down and talk. Alright? So, yun nga, nag-usap sila. Yoken basically gave Yo his descendant some options. Yo instantly went for the second option. Now, I don't know what that second option is dahil naputo yung conversation nila when Yoken gets killed by a super demon. Now, Yo has to face a, uh, well, this, uh, this group of super demons who, um, who just got pissed off when Yo kills the one that killed Yoken. Well, as they say, all hell is breaking loose. Okay? Literally and figuratively. Now, the figurative part of that is this one. Habang nangyayari itong kay Yo, the Gandara have made their mood. Yung mga nakalaban ng team da rin, yun ang sumalubo sa kanila. Well, pinagpapatay sila in order for them to experience their own hell. Kasi nga, silang tatlo, si uh, Ren, Horohoro, at si Chocolab, pinili rin maging five warriors kasama ni Yo. So, they all entered their own personal hell. Literally. Pero, sa case ni Chocolab, Merong sort of may guide sa kanya si Abaj. So what well, Abaj himself pushed Chocolab into this this bottomless pit wherein he has to get out. So in the process, uh, sinabi lang niya, you have to get out of there, Chocolab. Then he looks up to the sky, nakita niya yung trend ni Matamuni. So sinabi lang niya. The rest is up to you, Matamuni. <laughs> so, yeah, medyo magkakakilala na sila. Alright? Kasi mga, mga espiritu na rin sila. So, while all this is going on, nakialam na ang Team Moon sa mga kila Sati. Well, one of them, uh, one of them was able to kill Sati herself. And much to the, much to the shock of Ryu. Of, uh, of Ryu. So, well, of course, yung mga pumatay supposedly ang magbabantay sa mga sa mga bangkay. So, of course, in the case of Yo, dapat well, yung mga gandarang nandun. And of course, Team Punbari Hot Springs has been filled in on on what what is really going on. So, pitch in na rin sila sa, pag, sa pagpoproteksyon sa bangkay ni Yo. For Team da rin, yung mga pumatay sa kanila. Okay? The, um, the Wisdom Kings, yan. Yun yung mga, nakala, yun yung mga tinaro nila nun eh. The Wisdom, King, the Wisdom Kings themselves will protect these three bodies. Now, Lizard isn't so lucky. Although he's in hell now, there's no one to protect his body technically. Kasi, si Jean at si Marco disabled. Lalo na si Jean. And no Gandara in sight to actually supervise. Kaya, oh, heto na si Hao. Right? Although, um, well, akala ni, 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 ni Anahol na napatay na niya si, Mark, si Marco. No. Nope. Sorry ka na lang, Anahol, but John was quick to thinking. Pinagalaw, pinagalaw muna ni John yung kanyang yung kanyang spirit ally si uh, si Shawash so ayun na-resurrect bigla si Marco and came out fighting 
At mukhang na-level up pa yung power, yung power niya bilang shaman. Kasi nga, galing sa kamatayan eh. Right? He was just, uh, he just came back from the dead. So, ayun na. He now has the job, he now has this issue of facing how all by himself. Pero, final scene. Yung pala si, um, he found a way to, to have his archangel, yung malaking robot, um, escape with Lizard and Sean's bodies in it. So, doon ang tapos yung episode. So, let's break this episode down now. Critic sub style. Pace. Well, ngayon ko na, na ngayon, sasabihin ko na, I got no complaints when it came to the pacing of this episode. Right? It was a wild and well, sometimes excruciating pacing. Ganito na ang pacing for at least six or seven episodes. It's just as exciting as the last one. Flo naman. First gear ship. When Yoken got killed by that um by that uh, by that super demon. Bakit ko na lang ang gear ship to? Well, you could feel it in your bones that um that well yo finally realized what to do habang nandito siya right there <laughs> because well basically once your soul dies in hell that's it so in the case of Yoken Asakura that was it for him unfortunately yo got really pissed off so he now has something to um something to he now has a reason to raise hell literally <laughs> oh yeah it's a pivotal gear ship okay it's that pivotal second gear ship was when the wisdom kings killed all of team daren again it's a no brainer of a gear ship because well basically ini express na ng gandara ang pagbuhay sa sa tinatawag na five warriors to them, it's the only way to beat how. Uh, dito, dito mo makikita sa gearship na to yung mindset ngayon ng Gandara. Kahit uh, later on, uh, napatay si Sati. But I'm very sure, the Gandara now, the, the rest of the Gandara now have their mission orders beforehand. Kaya, again, it's a crucial gearship. Final gearship was, well, the final scene. These three gearships that I saw, well, all of them are no-brainers. And all of them will have implications later. Well, within the, la within the final 10 episodes of the Shawan King reboot. Itong tatlong to. So, whew, talagang, things have, gotten, uh, things have gotten wilder this time. Plot-wise, Planchado sa planchado. <laughs> In all um, of the plots of the individual episodes of this anime, eto na siguro ang pinaka-planchado. Kasi, in one scene, uh, the viewers in hell. In one scene, they're in the world of the living. One scene, they're back in hell. One scene, back to the world of the living. And, well, for me, hindi ako na-confuse. I exactly know where uh, where the continuity of this episode is going to. Probably one of the most well-ironed-out plots this um uh, this week. Itong episode na to ng Shaman King 2021. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Shaman King 2021, episode 42, Two thumbs up, a oh god! I would be um, I would be an imbecile if I if I think it over, pa. Okay, alatay. It's a really good episode, and dami ng yare. Talagang ini express na ng gandara ang development ng five warriors because well, time is not on everybody's side except how. Wala nang ibang gagawin si Hao kundi matulog and fuse with the Great Spirit. 
in order to become the in order to be um, a certified shaman king yun na lang ang gagawin niya pero based on his actions here his sudden appearance well if Marco has any suspicion that Lee Serk is one of the five warriors this confirms it so well hindi na makikialam ng ganito si Hao kung kung, uh, kung alam niyang may kalalagyan siya sa five warriors tama ba ako mga lifestyle so again Shaman King 2021 episode 42 two thumbs up another two thumbs up for the Shaman King people mga lifestyle wow another one episode pero malaman malaman so Patreon wait for my next upload and for those of you who are still stuck with the ARD relax lang but I still recommend that you um uh, subscribe to my Patreon or join my fan group on Beagle. Until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Oh, the thing lang pala sinasabi ni ni Genshan kay um kay Kisop 2. In reality, yup, finorward na niya yung concern niya sa pinaka commanding general ni ng lahat. And what? Bottom line, inapprove ng commanding general na dapat gawin na ng paraan si AR-15. Pero, uh, recon mission muna. They went with the mission, so they were they were um, planning recon, then, all of a sudden, uh, the hunter uh, taps into their taps into their comms. Ayun. Uh, nagyabang that. Wow. We have AR-15, uh, at ang Ang hihingin ko lang na terms ay ang ay ang pagsuko ni M4A1. Then pina uh, pina listen in niya si AR15. Ayun, yung sinabi lang ni AR15, wag kang wag kang kaagat sa wag kang kaagat. Pwede, wag kang kaagat sa mukhang na 'yan. Yun lang ang sinabi basically yun ang sinabi ni AR15 kay M4A1. Merong pumasok na parang runaway car. At bigyan what but the moment that car hit the um uh, the next one yung naka yung naka nakatambay lang doon all hell broke loose um the sanguis dust started shooting at each other then uh syempre may apoy may, may accident din nangyari so gulo talagang nagkaroon ng uh, nag emergency status ang boom base ni hunter so pero hindi niya malaman kung ha ito lang yung Aksidente ng emergency status sa tayo. So, nagtataka siya. Now, the recon team picked this up. So, nireport nila kay Genchan. And what? Well, Genchan saw an opportunity to to um, to take this base. It's now an all-out assault against the base. And it's not ngayon ni Genchan si M4A1 na gawan ng paraan yung defense defense system sila. So, pasok sila ni Sop 2. Excuse me. Ginawa ni M4A1, nag-tap sa defense systems in this in this room na na-secure nila. At yun. Ginawa niya na paraan, nag, nag-down lahat ng defense systems. So, wide open ang base to attack. So, pasok na silang, pasok na ibang, ibang dolls. Then, eventually, Hunter regains control of the of the entire base yung kumbaga operation so um all the sandwich dolls are now under her command pero while she was making her um making um while she was planning an ambush on on probably the elite dolls ayun tinrap na pala siya ni AR-15 trap na trap na siya bang binila ni AR-15 sa ulo so the moment that happened, all operations in that base stopped. Even, uh, even the same business attack. So, yep. Chop one up for the good guys. And, AR-15 is now back in the fold. Final scene. Well, post-credit, binigyan ng bagong mission order si Commander Genshan, ng, ng General. Uh, they're supposed to meet up with a group that is, um, 
that is uh investing that is checking on some some vital sangvis secrets so let's break this episode down now critic sub style base well naging tense lang ang pacing when they when the when they were on recon i felt that okay i felt the tenseness uh due to the because of the pacing of this episode yung first um probably the first third and then, more than the first third of the episode light moments eh kasi syempre nag um uh, nagkasama nag sama ang mga dolls and uh, and they're all excited to meet the the meet to meet the two elite dolls yan nga si, si M4A1 at si SOP2 if there's anything the pacing of this episode then can prove to you it's this AR-15's goals is more clear-cut than their leader there's a lot of things the uh, the pacing will uh, the pacing will teach you about this episode do I have complaints? obvious wala flow naman well first gear shift here was um was when well basically hunter hunter goes arrogant and taps into and taps into the um into the griffin comms to announce that well i don't uh, i know you're there i know you're uh, you're spying on my base so here it is mm. the ar-15 talagang what why did i call this a gear ship simply lang folks She's the villain right now of this ep- She's the villain in this episode. Kaya, yung yabang, yung angas, at yung pagiging terorista niya, inilabas niya dito sa episode na to. Basically, an idea, an inkling, on how devious the high-end models are. Are there m- high-end models more evil than Hunter? Based on the progression, and from this gear ship, Mukhang oo. <laughs> Second gear shift was when um, all of a sudden a train car yun nga, yung train crash with, from within that base. No, it's a no-brainer of a gear shift, folks. It triggered the battle scene. When that train crash happened, all hell broke loose in this episode. So, I would be an idiot if I do not call this a gear shift. Final gear shift was well was when yun nga, Hunter Hunter always thought that um she's about to trap the two elite dolls but here comes AR15 trapping her instead. Yeah, siya naman ang inutakan ni AR15. But why do I call it a gear shift? Simple lang. On their uh, uh, individually these elite dolls are dangerous. Okay, yung elite dolls ng AR team, pag nagkanya-kanya sila, they are still dangerous. And together, sila ang pinakamalaking, pinakamalaking migraine ng Sandis. So these three gear shifts that I saw, hmm, the last two, may play a role down the line in this anime. Plot-wise. Wala eh. No side stories or back stories. Not even an explainer. Kaya, malinis ang plot, mga ka-lifestyle. Because, um, in the heat of battle, you're going to cinch in a back story or a side story. Parang ang pangit eh. So, ginawa nila, she had, they had, um, Asai Productions had AR-15 explain how she, um, how she was able to, how she was able to trap Hunter. So, okay lang yun. Kasi, well, the villain needs to know how the, how the hero took her out before, yeah, before, um, before putting her to sleep permanently. So, it's a really clean plot kasi may battle scene eh. you need a plot as clean as possible 
to um to totally uh, have the viewer immerse in uh, in that particular scene. I tell you guys, this episode had a really clean plot. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, folks. So, Dolls Frontline Episode 5. Pao lagi sip. Mm. Two thumbs up. Pakusapa natin yung ano. Yung. Yung final scene. Alright? Reminds me a lot of AR team. Kasi. Apat din sila eh. Yung. Yung magiging kamit ng mga bida. So. I'm uh, just really curious, okay? I'm just really curious. And they hold, on their holding um, vital sangvis secrets. Kaya, yun ang magiging, yun ang naging mission orders ngayon ni, ni Commander Genshan. So, iririlay niya ngayon kung sino mga dolls na pwede dito. Hmm. Di kaya si M16 ang isa sa mga yun? Pwede rin. Alright? Kasi, matagal na rin nawawala si si, uh, si M16 eh. Siya na lang, siya na lang hindi pa lumalabas ulit. Ever since the pilot. Hindi. Ever since episode 3 pala. Ever since episode 3. So, after that, hindi na siya, nagpaki- hindi na siya pinapakita. So, there is, a, there is a good chance that one of them is M16. Kurusa, kurusa talaga ako, guys. So, tutok pa more sa anime na to. So, again, Dolls Frontline Episode 5. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga ka-lifestyle. Wow, galing ni AR-15. Nauta ka na, Hunter. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still, um, who are still glued to the CHD, chill, chill lang muna. But, I still recommend you um, subscribe to my Patreon or join my fan group on Bigo Muna. But until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Kaka-intriga. Ganito yung nangyari. Richard accompanies the king again, uh, his brother, to a hunting trip. Pero yung pala... Well, uh, another sexual tryst with his um uh, with his girlfriend, see si Elizabeth uh see si Elizabeth Woodville. His job now is to wait for so wait for Edward to finish his business with Elizabeth. So apa lagi tayo sa so parang uh, parang malit na bahay lang nila. Who shows up again? Si well the former king, si Henry. Henry made a lot of advances to Richard, pero uh, it, it was revealed in this episode that Richard may actually be a girl. Until that is confirmed, yeah, dumabas na pagkayawi ng anime na to. Unti-unti na nahuhulog ang loob ni Richard kay Henry. Natigil lang ito kasi may kasundoan sila na, well, until the rain stops, sige, uh, doon ka muna sa tinitirhan ko bahay. So, yeah, they shared stories. Then, they shared, um, ano, then they shared um, fears, dislikes. Then of course, uh, well, yeah. Henry made the ultimate advance by trying to kiss Richard. <laughs> but ako napasubo sa anime to. But anyway, so, eventually the rain stopped. And sinabi na lang niya kay Henry na umalis na because the true owner of the house is coming. Ayun nga, si Edward. Eh, biniro nga ni Edward yung kapatid niya. Ano, teka Richard. Nagplano ko rin na may imit na babae, ano, nang wala ako. Umamin ka. Final scene. Nung, okay, nakabalik, nakabalik na sila sa palasyo. Edward uh, plans to make an announcement. Pero dumating si, si Warwick. The Earl of Warwick, yung kanyang uh, closest advisor. Na meron ding i-announce. So, pinauno na niya muna si, si Warwick. In announced si Warwick that um, the marriage contract has been 
has been sealed. Edward III is going to marry, uh, I forgot that, uh, Lady Bonne, uh, who, who, is un, uh, who is one of the King of France's nieces. So, tong tong mga tao. Uy, royal blood. Okay. That will be, uh, that'll be, um, uh, it'll, it'll be a great marriage between our countries. Uh, Gumagano na mga, yung mga kasalo nila sa dinner. Richard is also there. George is also there. Yung, uh, yung isa pa niyang kapatid. Pero, eh, tinuloy pa rin ni Edward yung kanyang announcement. So, kaya siguro kay Warwick. Tsaka na akong papaliwanan. Here's my announcement. Yun nga. He announced that he is going to marry Elizabeth Woodville. Pinakilala pa niya sa mga tao. Pina, uh, pinalabas siya sa from, from, from a holding place of sorts. So, yun, pinakilala na niya. Pero, bottom line, lumabas na ang pagkayawin ng anime na to. Whew. Hindi ko na-orient dun. <laughs> But anyway, let's break this episode down now. Critic sub style. Pace. I don't know. I found the yaoi scenes excruciating. <laughs> Because hindi ako talaga maka, masyadong makarelate sa mga sa mga yaoi scenes ever since pa. So, But, but, but nonetheless, it was an excruciating pace. It toned down to just slow nung uh, nagkaiwala na sila ng landas ni Henry and yung nga dumating si Edward. Then, the final scene came around. Ayun. Um, it's quite a shocking end. If there's anything the pacing would tell you, it's this. This is probably what the first draft of Richard III looked like. This is uh, this was how um, William Shakespeare initially initially um, wrote it. Pero you would question that for the sake of argument. Kung ganito nga ang first draft ng Richard III, and uh, you put this out as a play, siguro maray manami manonood dito because. Because of the gender tolerance we have these days. Of course, it was the Renaissance, okay? People, people aren't exactly gender tolerant at the time, okay? So, to them, they only have two genders, male and female. The pacing will make you think this way. Ako! Hindi ako inorient ang pacing ng episode. Ah! I was shocked by the Yawi sequences, okay? I gotta admit to you guys. I I usually don't watch Yawi animes, okay? They're not exactly in my um in my anime watching priority list. But since this anime was based on um uh, on one of William Shakespeare's legendary plays, I just had to watch it. Alright? Don't na na tayo. So, well, do I have complaints when it comes to, when it came to the pacing? No. Nope. It actually elicited the emotion of shock to me. Matindi ang, <laughs> ang shock value ng episode na to. Right? The yaoi sequences and of course the final scene. I got no complaints when it came to the pacing of this episode. Rather, I am flabbergasted. Okay? Because... Uh, because of the shock value it gave this episode. Flow naman. The first gear shift here was obviously nung nagkita uli sila Richard at Henry. Ang dami. You can deep dive into this gear shift, gear shift so much. Okay? As to question uh, those two characters' gender preferences. Second gear shift was when um well when uh, when when Henry was about to kiss Richard it's a no brainer of a gearship because this is the one that confirmed that Richard the third is a yaoi anime <laughs> it's part yaoi at least kasi um hindi naman yata hindi naman to, hindi naman sa gender preference umiikot ang story ang ito eh no it's about um yung pagiging yeah on 
on how basically uh, about how basically Richard the uh, Third developed that uh, that hunger for power, kumaga. So, nga, that was the ultimate yawi moment. <laughs> It is also the gear shift that confirmed the shock value of this episode. <laughs> Need I say more, folks? Final gear shift is, of course, the final scene. It also confirms that, yep, this anime is a bit historically accurate. Hmm. So these three gear shifts that I saw, the last one, of course, the final scene, will have implications down the line in this anime. Plot wise, planchado. I'll give you an example on kung bakit planchado ang plot nito. Well, you seen the scene of that that um that post that post love scene between uh Henry, Edward and Elizabeth. He was telling Elizabeth that fairy tale um that uh, about uh, which. Which is correlating to what is happening with Richard and Henry. Yung, um, they got caught in a storm. Tapos, um, medyo na, na, tardo? Inanod ng, inanod ng ilog si Henry. Richard tried to rescue him. And what? Um, Richard ended up on the receiving end of that, on that, on that raging, of those raging waters eventually ni rescue siya ng anak ni Henry si Rick, anak ni Henry si Edward well he did give mouth to mouth resuscitation to Richard pero medyo suggestive eh <laughs> mukhang may pi- <laughs> ah what the heck so yun ang example ko on kung ba on why uh, it's an iron out plot so JC Staff is is um, showing to us two different incidents that are happening at the same time. Yung yung nangyayari kila Richard and Henry in graphics lang eh. Kumaga artwork lang habang nagkikwento si Richard uh, kay Edward kay Elizabeth. Okay, the K- King Edward kay Elizabeth, okay? We'll just, we'll just call him King Edward kasi si Henry may anak din na pangal- may anak sa pangalang Edward din. So yun nga. So while King Edward was telling this story, uh, this story between uh, Richard and Henry are is going on. So ang ganda. Talagang it was a well ironed out plot. Again, I had those Shakespearean feels when I was when I was particularly watching that sequence. Talagang Masasa- nasabi ko na yep Richard III nga to and itong ganito yun so pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode so Requiem of the Rose King episode 4 I'm not giving this because of the Yahweh sequences alright mm. two thumbs up pero Hindi mo rin masisisi si Henry kung lumabas kung lumalabas ang kanyang pagiging Becky kay Richard for Richard. Kung talagang lalaki ang tingin niya rito. And well, He has a wife, but he thinks he's in love with another man. Kasi Richard always presents himself as a man, pero I think by birth she's actually he's actually a girl. So, hindi mo rin masisisi kaya talagang what? I believe um no, uh, Henry is probably not gay. He's probably bi. Kasi nakapag-asawa siya. And he also he also likes men. <laughs> kaya ka pala kaya, kaya ka siguro in-overthrow ni Edward II. <laughs> siguro meron kong Siguro meron siyang ganitong uh, sikretong tinatago. Right? And, you know, it, it was the renaissance. Okay? In real life, it's the renaissance. So, 
Gender tolerance wasn't a thing back then. Okay? Homosexuals are persecuted. Kaya, um, hindi ko rin masisisi si Henry kung bakit hindi siya nag-a-out. <laughs> Because, well, siguro, 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 pag, siguro, pag nag-out siya, siya ang bibitay ng mga kababayan niya. <laughs> Right? People are not so gender people weren't so gender tolerant in those days. Kaya <laughs> You know, overall talaga it's a really great episode. And again, I I had those Shakespearean feels sa episode na to. At saka, wow. Umiinit na ang ang kwento because Well, King Edward has just announced that uh, his his marriage to Elizabeth Woodville, which will prove later on to be his downfall. All right, guys, check the history books if I'm wrong, and comment below your thoughts on that. So again, Requiem of the Rose King, episode four, two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. If you're into Yahweh animes, you may find this interesting. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still glued to the CHD, I strongly recommend that you still subscribe to my Patreon or at least join my fan group on Beagle. Until then, enjoy the next review in this digest.